Hello everyone, welcome back to Mixbus TV. David here, hope you're having a great day. Welcome to How to Record Heavy Distorted Guitar, our new mini-series. We are here with my friend Mario, guitarist from Let Them Fall. If you don't know the band, check them out, they're really great. In this series, I will show you both the basics on how to record distorted guitars. We're gonna see one, two, three, and four mics configuration. We're gonna hear them individually, we're gonna hear them together, but we're also gonna see a couple of tricks that I've never seen anyone using before. One in particular. He's gonna play something for us and we're gonna hear all the mics and all the configuration. Let me show you the setup we have. Mario is gonna play with his Ibanez guitar with EMG pickups and we have his stack. We're gonna use a Line 6 Elix rack with his sound, we have our cabinet here. Now, a word about this cabinet. This cabinet is loaded with two Vintage 30 speakers and two GT12 speakers in X pattern configuration. V30s are more mid-forward classic sound and I like the GT12 for the bottom end. First thing, when recording guitars, when recording a cabinet that has more than one speaker, you should just grab a 57 and try test all the four speakers because one of them usually always sounds better than the other three and it should be pretty easy to spot that one now i i know this cabinet i build it so i already know which mic i like on which uh, speaker and as you can see here we have two sm57s now i went for the classics because i didn't want to add any variable to you know this recording at this test so i placed the first mic, the first 57, from the angle of the camera, you can't really tell, but it's pointed right where the dust cap meets the side of the cone. And the other one, it's a 45 degrees and it's pointed, as you can see, maybe, at the edge of the cone. We all know the reason why. The first one, this one, is brighter and the one pointing at the edge of the cone is darker. When combined together, they're gonna give us full sound. You can see they both touch the grill, so we are in phase. Now, the third mic is a ribbon mic. This one is a cheap 50 bucks ribbon mic, and from the shape, you can probably tell what mic kinda emulate, we can tell. And as you can see, it's pointed right at the center of the cone, this is a fairly dark mic, so pointing it at the center of the cone, the brighter spot, kind of balance the sound overall. And of course, it complements well the two SM57, mid forward, very bright, very in your face, and we are gonna hear them individually in a second. Now, the trick that I was talking about. As you can see, we have a DUI sub kick. This is nothing else than a speaker taken from a speaker of a Hi Fi Pioneer old stereo. And I just wired a cable, a quarter inch cable that is going straight into the line in. This is it. And I have a video on how I made the sub kick and it's literally that easy. You just have to wire a cable to a quarter inch or a mic cable and just put it on a stand. And you've seen sub kick used on kick drums all the time. But something I've been doing for more than 10 years is this, is using a sub kick in front of a guitar cabinet to capture all the low end. A quick word about the sub kick on guitars and why I think it makes a difference, why I've been using it for years. I think we all agree that a recording of an electric guitar, so of a guitar amp, it will never be as good as the experience of being in front of the cabinet, in front of the amp. One of the main reasons is because it's a completely different experience. You feel the vibration, you feel the room, you feel the air moving. This is what we usually miss in a recording. If you think about it, we never hear a guitar amp with our ear next to the cone, like where we put the mics. So the sub kick for me is a feel mic. It's not a matter of how much low end, which is probably a lot, and how extended it is. For me, the sub kick on electric guitars gives me the closest thing to that feeling of air moving and we will hear that in solo and in context with all the other mics. This works specifically well for what we are doing today, heavy distorted down tuned guitar. And the last one is this Octava 
MK12 here. And as you can see, it's pointed at the ceiling. Now, this is a control room, it's not a live room, so it's very dead sounding. It's not gonna be a roomy mic, but I just wanted to put it here to show you later on in the video one specific trick on how to use room mics especially on metalcore stop and go kind of riffs. So this is our fifth mic. We have room, 257s, a ribbon mic and our sub kick. All the mics are going into this Soundcraft mixer here, which is going into the SSL converters straight into Pro Tools. So let's hear how these mics sound. We've already recorded few takes, so let's hear how they sound completely raw all the four close mics, no ambient mic for now, left, right performance and a third performance in the center, low volume. Let's hear that. Okay, so these were all the four close mics, the two SM57s, the ribbon mic and the sub kick together, left, right and center performance, completely raw, no EQ, no anything, just levels. And we will listen to how each individual mic sounds in solo in a minute and I will show you the tracks because we had a couple of tracks that had the phase inverted. But I want to say this, when recording guitars, when recording everything really, but guitars in particular, our goal is to capture the sound that is coming out from the amp as close as possible to how it sounds in the room and I was here listening to the sound that was coming out from the amp so I know at this point that these four mics give me a complete picture of what was coming out from the amp. From this point on it is completely up to the engineer taste how to combine the different microphones, the levels and how to tweak the sound, how to EQ the sound using more or less of one of the mics. But the important thing, I know that with these four mics I have a complete picture, I have all the options that I need to come out with different variation of that sound. But without further ado let's listen to how each individual mic sounds. The first one is the first 57 pointed straight at the cone where the dust cup meets the side of the cone. The second is the second 57 tilted 45 degrees pointing at the edge of the cone. So it's a little bit darker than the first one. Let's hear how they sound together. Now let's listen to the ribbon microphone. And this is the sub kick by itself. So as you can hear we go from the brighter to the darker one and let me play you the ambient mic even though we are going to see how to use that later on in the mixing part. Okay, we're not going to use it as is, we're going to process it and do a couple of tricks. Let me show you the tracks up close because I had to flip the phase of both the ribbon mic and the sub kick. You can see the waveform, these are the 257s and these are the ribbon mic and the sub kick and the phase was inverted so I just flipped the phase here on the SSL channel. But let me play you the four mics with the phase flipped on the sub kick and I will just flip back and forth the phase on the ribbon mic. We will start with the right sound. So 
So as you can hear, when all four mics are combined, just flip in the face of one of them, the ribbon mic, the sound collapses completely. So it was pretty obvious in this case. As for the routing of these mics, like I said many times when there is a multi-mic source, uh, later on for mixing, we want to treat each side, each performance as is one mic. So this is the way they are routed. We have three performances that I'm using right now. The, the bluish one is the center one. The pink one is the left. You can see all of them, they go to the left bus which is an aux bus we're gonna see and the blue one go to the right so each group each color goes left right and center you can see these three aux buses and the center performance is just up to your taste without it we have a wider guitar sound but less mono compatible with the center performance in of course we have a more mono compatible stereo guitar bus and to me it sounds also a little bit stronger even if we sacrifice that super wide feeling that we have without the center performance but we can keep the center performance in and then open up the stereo field a little bit on the whole stereo bus that will give us the spread and we will still be mono compatible let me play you the guitars with and without the center performance Okay, if we want to solo just the guitars, and maybe I can turn it up a bit just to make the difference obvious. See, this level is already way too much for me so minus 12 is usually a good rule of thumb for me for the center performance it works well and doesn't get in the way and really quickly let me try a couple of combination for you by muting some of the mics on left or right just to show you how you can completely change the sound and almost mix it just by deciding which mic you will use and the levels But yeah, these are the raw recordings, no EQ, no compression, no saturation, no anything at all. The three buses, left, right, and center, go to this uh, pink all guitar aux bus, which is our stereo guitar bus. This is not a complete song, we don't have to fit the guitars with everything else, but ideally, if you had to do that, you would need only to apply processing on that all guitar output stereo bus. If that is not enough, I would go to the center right and left uh, buses to apply processing, change the EQ a little bit. But we will see that in the next episode, some options for mixing and how I like to use the room mics on electric guitars. If you like this video, please leave us a like. If you have any question, leave it in the comment down below. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already and see you next time.